club members, welcome, 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 welcome. Uh, we have our first artist guest, my friend Samantha Tungaloa. Correct. How are you? I'm well, thank you. See, I was just making a joke that the whitest thing about me is is how I pronounce names. And last week uh, we were trying to to uh, I was trying to say the name of the young brother who the sheriff just murdered, and I just bastardized it. And my friend's like, "Damn, dude, that's a horrible story." But what's worse is how you pronounce names. So, <laughs> well, at least you have someone to call you out. That's right. That's right. Uh, Samantha is my friend that I met four years, five years ago. I think it was like three or four years ago. You were a senior. Uh, she worked at Starbucks was, where all artists work. Uh, that's true. That's like one of the greatest lines is I'm an actor. Yeah. What, at, at what restaurant? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's funny. I was I'm, just a friendly, uh, local barista right down the street. Actually, I thought you were the hot multicultural sister and I was like, Not Hey, too. you should be nice to her. And then, you know, what do you know? Uh, and he wasn't. I was. I'm always <laughs> nice to you. He would you. always give me crap. I was always from nice. the other side of the counter. Big but I of always that. knew you wanted a venti dark roast. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. With a little bit of half and half in yeah. the interracial like, oh, style is what I call This guy's here. That's what I, I know his coffee. <laughs> Samantha worked at Starbucks, and I talked to her. And we, we, as I always do, talk to every multicultural person I meet. And I found out that Samantha was an artist. And... Uh, I didn't know you were a real artist until you did your senior show or something. Yeah. And I Wait, saw you. a your... real artist? Well, but everyone's an artist. I didn't, but the and You're an artist? Barely. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, and I meant, no, I meant real artist as in real fucking artist. Now, and for clarity, for clarity, this is how full of shit Samantha is. Are you questioning whether I'm an artist? I bought two of your fucking paintings. It's true. I bought two of your paintings and they weren't cheap and I loved them. Uh, and so, but I saw your senior show. It was my thesis show, I yeah. believe. Yeah. And you had a bunch of stuff and I was like, man, this is cool. And I started looking at it and I said, I wanted to buy some of it. And then it, what I liked about it too, is it seemed like you were exploring some stuff. Yeah. And I remember even back then I was like, that's, I, I wonder what that's about. And I, as I do instantly connected everything to being multicultural and, uh, ended up, uh, buying, this piece, which is my favorite piece, and I needed something else for this wall, and you said, I'll make you something. Yeah. And so you made this. And by the way, I love, this is this is my assessment. This is so free, and it's so just you, and this one felt uh, difficult for you. Yeah, I mean, I it think was interesting. It's, that's a good observation, because... See, I'm a fucking artist, Mark. Yeah. He's a real artist Just now <laughs> by association because I'm here. Um, but that's good because I that comes up a lot in my practice, these dualities, right? Freedom, restraint. Um, so that is a good observation. But it was but what's funny is and it's cool is it was I love this piece, and I was just telling these guys earlier that it's probably three months ago I was having a shitty shitty week or month or something and uh so i'm sitting in my living room with which is also our studio by myself and i looked over and i'm like yeah but i love my fucking art <laughs> and it really did and it was one of those things and i and and i knew then i wanted to, to have you back on because part one of one of those i've got a lot of good advice but i have a friend of mine who taught me how to do politics and all this and he was a, a african-american brother really cool and really successful and he said the first thing you should do is get some art. Art will matter. And it was, so I got this art. What a great friend. Uh, but but it's what's cool is, it, and I have a lot of art, and some of, I have this, maybe we'll do a show, I have a piece of art upstairs that I bought in Aspen. In Aspen? Yeah. I still remember that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you told me you were drunk. But and wasted. you told me how much you paid Way for it. Crazy. And I'm staring at it like. I'm like, it. I, I remember calling my friend going, uh, you, I bought a painting for 10,000 fucking dollars drunk. And he said, dude, I tried to tell you not. You wouldn't hear it. And I was like, shit. I should have been an ass. <laughs> it was horrible. It was, we we had to get it to appraise for uh, uh, insurance. And they're like, thousand bucks. <laughs> At best. At, oh, that, the guy, for the frame. Oh, yeah, probably was. He's like, yeah, this is just, this is not really insurable. But okay, well, I paid 10,000 bucks for it. So. But now I have, I have that art. I have other art, but I have real art now. And it's because of you. Thank you. I appreciate the support. How, 
Well, that that's another thing. That's one of the things that I want to talk to talk about on this podcast, and I do all the time. And it, it is we need if multicultural people, if we support ourselves, as we keep saying, we're going to follow the Jewish model. If we do that, we get a self-sustaining economic cycle. That means that we can do what we want to do. It means we can grow our own artists, uh, you know, support our own writers and things like that. And your art is great. I, I, and aside from being drunk in Aspen, I think I have a really good taste for art. And I saw yours, and I had a, didn't I have difficulty getting this? There was some. Re, this is the one I really wanted, and there was some difficulty getting it. Wasn't there something I was like, no, I really want that one. Do you remember that? Um, I think maybe it was in a show at the time. Could be. And that's why it wasn't available or maybe I had other offers. Who knows? It was. It, <laughs> well, it was, but it was. But, but, but I, I knew. did come here and install these bowls for you. You did. You're very nice. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah. What's funny is you talk about that one being more free when the history behind it, there was a, an existing painting underneath. So that's where the blue kind of comes through. And I think I was having difficulty with that one. Yeah. And that's when I was like, ah, oh, you know what? Yellow is my favorite color. You know, so I just went all crazy with a bunch of brushes. And, and there you have it. So sometimes the pieces that I work really hard on, you know, people can't see that struggle. Right, right. They just say, oh, wow. Why the sexual component? I didn't know this, but my friend Alex, hi, Alex, said, um, there's a lot of nudity in this. And I'm like, oh, there is? She goes, oh, yeah. And I asked you about it, and you're like, oh, yeah. Well, what is that? Well, so he saw nudity where? Just like he sees a woman's body. Yeah, well, the, a woman's body and it's bent over. Uh, Interesting. Didn't she? Didn't you confirm that there was? Yeah, I mean, so she's a lot like of interesting. These, I'm like, I'm not making this shit up. No, it's. I mean, I don't intend to create that type of see, imagery. You, when I ask you about it, you seem to suggest that it was intentional. Be, well, I and I'm going to get to that, All but. Right. Um, she is a because, fucking artist, by the way, isn't she? Because, Jesus Christ. Because What's your boyfriend's I, um, name? I'm going to send him a note. Dear Jim, sorry. I would never date a Jim. <laughs> oh, thank you. Appreciate that, baby. Or a Michael. Wow, well, there you go. <laughs> um, but um, What is uh, uh, Patrice O'Neill says? Philip? Philip. Philip. Um, because, so when you met me, I was very much into German expressionism, so using a lot of heavy brush strokes, a lot of gestural uh, marks, and I always think that painting and art in general is the extension of the body. So I'm physically using my body to create these. It's an extension of the body or of the mind? I, I've both. Never, wow. It's both. Yeah. yeah. Um, because, well, for me, right? Because I find the process to be very physical and laborious. And so I'm using movement, you know, to create these shapes and to make these color blocks. And so that's why I say that there is a woman's body in there because I made this work right. and I'm using right. the movement of my body. Right. So people oftentimes see like, you know, vaginas or, you know, a bunch of beautiful women. So it's it's not odd that your friend made that observation. Well, she loves beautiful women, too. So. There you go. And uh, she, I'm sure she is a beautiful she, woman. She, she is hot. There's no question about that. Uh, thank you. Um, you said that it's it's physical, but when you do art, and you are a real artist, I mean, with the way you studied in, didn't you go to I Europe? went to I went to Firenze. I went to Florence, yeah. Italy, and I, yeah, I mean, a dream. I mean, so, you're, I mean, you are, you're the only real artist I know who actually is a real artist doing all this kind of shit, yeah. and your stuff is beautiful. Is it how much of it is is emotional? How much of it is? It's like when I when I do something, whatever I do, it to me it's almost all emotional. It's, it's this podcast for me was man, this is intellectually, but it was also more just heartfelt that this this is so important. Is that how art is for you? Or yeah, um, it can be emotional, and sometimes it doesn't have to be. Yeah, and that's what I love about it. I mean, it doesn't have to always be so serious, but. In creating these works, yeah, they were. I mean, even in just the color alone, you've got your primaries. You have red, you know, anger. Yellow is a very happy color for me, but it's also associated with anxiety, caution, you know, stuff like that. So I find my true emotion comes out in the mark making and the color. Um, so whether I'm angry, <laughs> feeling blue, you'll see it. You does know? a piece ever, though, when, when you start it, does it continue with that? feeling or emotion 
or does it change as you progress? It changes, yeah. So on this one where you say you started at blue underneath and you came out and you covered in yellow, mm -hmm. what was that about? I think I the blue painting was something that I had already mocked up in my mind. Like, it's going to look like this. I'm going to use these colors and make these shapes. And I think when I do that, sometimes I get stuck, you know, and that's when I talk about freedom and restraint. And that's what the whole process is about is like letting go of these ideas of what you had for your painting. Now, is that what you away. mean by being stuck is yeah. letting go? Yeah. Being stuck and then letting go, maybe taking a step away from the painting and working on something else and then coming back to it. So can you explain, cause that's an, that, that's a, that's a funny concept, but it's also interesting. I think I, I know when like I'm working on a brief right now and there are times where I'm just fucking stuck, dude. It's like, this is not happening. Is it the same in art or is it? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's different for everybody, but I get to those places where I, I'm like, I can't fucking work on this painting much longer, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like either it's done or sometimes I get to a point where I'm like, can someone just tell me what I should do? Wow. Because that would be a lot easier. Does, does it, now let's just say you 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 actually ask that. D doesn't that infringe on the creative process? Doesn't that infringe on? To me, I would think that art, especially real art, mm -hmm. that that thought has gone into. It it would seem I don't want to say cheating to me. It seemed, but it would seem as if it would take away from your accomplishment if someone else told you what else that needed. Yeah, it it could. And you know, since I went to art school, I was involved in all of the politics to where, oh, you should paint this way or you should change the color. So in a way, it, it can invade my personal space. But if I'm asking for a friend right? yeah, <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, hey, help me out here. But also, too. Um, Is that part of the process, asking for help in art? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's why we have critiques, you know, where we sit for hours and we just talk about a piece and talk about a piece and talk about a piece. We talk about, like, down to its core elements, color, line. Wow. But and then the artist's intention, but also since this is abstract, um, the viewer's intention, right. right? And for me, it's like I'll have these intentions going into these pieces, especially the ones that you have here. But um, in the end, I think it's subjective. So it's up to the Subject viewer. From your perspective or from the, the viewers. viewers? Really? Yeah. Really? So when you do a piece, it's, you're not doing the piece that you want to do? Um, it's that's. So all, it, I like these questions because these are all questions that I'm asking myself while I'm creating. I'm like, well, is this what I want? Wow. Or is this what I want the viewer to notice? And it's often the things that I love the most about the painting that the viewer has no idea exists, right? It's this little tiny piece in the corner that maybe was an accident. And I'm like, oh my God, that's my favorite right, part. Right. And no one even notices it. Wow. Um, and that's okay. That's totally cool. That's part of art making. But I mean... It happens all the time. What's it What's it feel like when when you know that this portion of this painting you just did is fucking it? <laughs> you know, when you're looking at it, you're like, that is, that's fuck, that's it. That's, that's it. It's usually right in the beginning. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Like with paintings like this. Um, but I've kind of progressed onto other mediums since we've, because we haven't seen each other in Yeah, you years. kill babies now. Yes. Yeah, you're using baby, uh, aborted baby fetuses parts. <laughs> I would We're never. joking. We're joking. <laughs> They're like, I knew it. I knew it. I knew that's what I those. I knew she was up to something <laughs> no good. It's that goddamn beanie she had on. What's in there? <laughs> <laughs> is that a beret? So, what is, so are you doing, struct are you doing uh, sculptures now more? Yeah, or? so I, I later on in my career at Cal State Long Beach, I took some sculpture classes and I was like, oh man, I should have enrolled in a sculpture program because that was the business. I learned how to weld, you know, wood shop, all that stuff. And I eventually got into weaving. And so I started ripping, I started making these paintings, ripping them up yeah, and then yeah, weaving them together. Yeah. So it's just, that's crazy. That's yeah, cool. But it's cool because though, huh? like, I still consider it painting, you yeah. know, I feel like Painting doesn't just to have just that uh, doesn't just have to exist on the wall. All right. It could exist, you know, anywhere else. Aren't so. most great artists doing multiple mediums though? Yeah. I, I mean, Galileo. I mean, wasn't he? I mean, he did. He he was so incredible. I was watching this. I I think it was the Tesla guy, and it was amazing. What's his name? Uh, Elon Musk, and I think it was him. And he said that. Coming up with the idea, if he could envision, if he could see it, 
Mm-hmm. Everything else was easy. It was just engineering. Right. And that's such right. an artistic, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's again, real artists. When you, I had this at our dispensary in Compton, there's this young Latino artist who was fucking amazing. And, and he would talk about his art and you, it was so cool. You could see, you could, you could see where he was trying to go. You could feel his artistry and how he wanted to say it. And it was fascinating to see because you knew you were talking to someone who was a real fucking artist. He was seeing art and it was funny because he was a, he was a Latino brother. I think he was like 19 and he just had, he did nice stuff. He just had no way to get it done. He had no way to go be an artist. And I remember going, this is really fucked up. How many, kids are there like this that are real artists you know what i mean it's an art right. it's like a, a great example is i remember i mean i know there are in sports you can watch a person in sports do something and everyone knows he's he or she is just fundamentally different there are artists that you can see and you're like he's amazing i bought one of his paintings it was like a thousand i gave him a thousand bucks for it to do and he did this thing and and it gives me goosebumps he went through why he did it and it was so complex and so layered and yet so simple it was just amazing. You well, know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, the fact that you gave someone that opportunity, you know, to have that conversation is like a blessing because, you know, some people walk through galleries and just look at art and that's it. But when you truly get to know the artist's intention, right. I'm all about like being intentional with right. everything you do, not right. just art, you know, right. um, people know that you're for real and they'll support that because um, when you're intentional and you're talking, to, I'm talking to you. You know that I'm here because I trust you. You have my full trust. Right By the now. way, we've we we've agreed because Samantha's here that Jeff can do whatever he wants. So here's Jeff. There's Jeff's ass for <laughs> those of you who wanted to know. Uh, <laughs> he's like, all right, give me some attention. All right, just um, just walk around. I'm I'm saving all the cat jokes because Samantha's so serious. <laughs> Well, we're talking about my wow. art. An art is so serious. <laughs> no, it doesn't have to be. It really but, doesn't. But for you, it is, though. Yeah, because it's it's my career. You know, I chose artist's life right. forever. Even what, if which, it, which, which you really have, though. And, and that's, again, back into me saying you're a real artist and you're being pissy about it. You really are a real artist. Thank and, you. And the decision to become a real artist. I remember I grew up poor in Linwood, California, and I remember... Uh, I think I was in ninth grade and I, I can write. I'm a great writer. And my teacher's like, oh my God, you should be a writer. I'm like, cool, I'll be a writer. I went and looked it up and they said they made $12,000 a year. Fuck that. Right. I mean, it was just, no, I refused to be, right. I grew up poor. And I was like, I, I'm, I'm not going to be poor. The fact that a, a person makes a decision to be an artist, I mean, that that is not a minor decision. That's not a, a insignificant um, choice. Mm. And to make that decision, you, that make that is a real artist. That, yeah. I mean, that that qualifies. A real artist is someone who says, I'm going to go do my art, and I'm going to make it work one way or the other. And that's just cool to me. You know what I mean? When you have that that principle, that integrity about who you are, and you're like, this is me. I'm, I'm a fucking artist. I'm a real artist. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I chose cool? it because it's my purpose, you know, and I... I didn't have anyone to say, oh, you should take art classes. You know, I just did it and found like, oh, this is what I love. You know, thankfully, I had some really awesome teachers who have inspired me to like continue my art practice to perhaps teach art one day. Um, And I think that art should be accessible. So that's another like big topic, I guess, that I'd like to talk about because You think of art, you think of it in a museum or a gallery space where people aren't very comfortable in those environments, you know, and I, I love art to be accessible to people, whether it's a painting or maybe just a small drawing or just a torn out piece of my sketchbook. Um, I think it's very important to uh, give people access to that because um, who knows, maybe you'll inspire them to be an artist one day. I was actually just in this show called Couriers of Hope. And it was through uh, Port City Guild, so downtown Long Beach. And what we did was we, each artist got to decorate these or just draw on these envelopes. We got to choose these envelopes and they were given to kids from Long Beach School District. And I'm still waiting to hear back, but um, they got to choose one to write about. And so 
they can either write about it or respond and make their own work. And then it gets sent to yeah. us and we get to choose which one we like. And then in exchange that that student gets, you know, my envelope. And so I was like, that's super cool, right. you know, right. like on an envelope. Right. And these kids get to write about art. Now, by accessibility, doesn't that also reap for me, of course, I, uh, I, I'm constantly conflicted. I, I'm not even conflicted. I'm constantly pissy about how poor kids get just no opportunities. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite lines to say is that when people are making fun of homeless people, or we had a, a foster kid who literally ran at a third grade level. And I always say to people, whenever they're being critical, it's like, you have no fucking idea. Mm -hmm. You have no idea what that kid has been through. And relatedly, as we just discussed about, if you're an artist, that shit is in you. Mm -hmm. And it's heartbreaking to me that how many Latino, African-Americans, multicultural, how many poor young artists who never have a chance, never had a chance to just, man, I, I want to draw this picture because this picture means something to me. And it's, it's, it's discouraging and it's, and it's disheartening and it's sad, not just for the broader community, but for that young person, I mean, there's, it's like 11% of people feel that they have artistic skills and things. So 11% of kids, we're just, fuck it. You, you, you don't get to explore who you are. I mean, think about who you are and someone's in, and, and you were trapped in a situation where you couldn't ever express yourself. You couldn't do what you wanted to do. That's fucked up. And, and so, you know, you talking about art being accessible, you know, um, the fact that you are a multicultural artist does, how does that impact you? I mean, how you said that you had people that helped you get into art. How, how did that process work for you? Your mom's Italian and your father is Samoan. Well, Samoan, yeah. Um, I was under. And the you don't impression. like rugby, though. I like rugby. Oh, I'm sorry. You got any other questions for me? No, no. I'm like, I, I <laughs> no, played I rugby like forever. Rugby. I see. Oh, you did? I didn't know. That. Oh my god, dude. Yeah, those guys are jacked. See, see, see. Look at them. <laughs> Right. Here's my favorite rugby story is I was uh, played rugby when I was in, started when I was in college and I went to a rugby match and I was with my friend and I said, uh, he goes, what do you think? I said, it's cool. I said, hey, uh, who are all the hot chicks? And he said, oh, they date the rugby players. I'm like, sign me up. I swear to God. I was like, okay. Were you good? I was great. I played for the Blues. We played in the National. We were, we played in the Rugby Super League. We played in the Final Four two out of three years. Oh, I got tons of pictures. But I, I, I have rugby friends that all their shits do a rugby. It's like, uh, dude, you're 48. You know, it's time to move on. But we had my good friend Brad Hughes on who had, uh, it was amazing. He won. He has one of the greatest God stories ever. But he also had serious brain issues associated with rugby. Yeah. And it's a great story, though. It's how he persisted and lived and and I love rugby. Rugby rugby's amazing. And the guys you meet are amazing. So that's why. Um, I, I've been to a rugby sevens tournament uh, out in Vegas. And I good. remember Samoa won. It's it Samoa always wins, especially in crazy. sevens. Especially in sevens. But it was so cool to see, you know, every country was basically dressed in, you know, their native yeah, yeah. clothing. Multicultural as fuck, it too. It was fun. Oh, dude. It's, it was rowdy. Oh, it was rowdy. I but, lost my voice from screaming. But no one's fighting. No one's being shitty. It's just this amazing like, multicultural world. And you're I'm like, like thinking about, did my family fight anybody? <laughs> <laughs> they may have. But if they did, they didn't mean it. If they did, in rugby, if you did, when it's over, you didn't mean it. It's all good. Thank you. No worries. No <laughs> worries. Game. Let's just move on. Good game. Um, back to your question, okay, about school, right? About how... about. You know, about how you ended up becoming an artist okay. and you had no real direction. I mean, how, how does that how does that happen? My, Is it just luck? Uh, I don't think it was luck. I oh, you think it was God? You think it, there, well, let me ask I, you this before you get started. Do you have a great God story? A great God story? I bet you do. I bet you let me let me I, let me I'm going to predict this. I bet you have a great God story. And it's going to take you. Uh, about 12 minutes to finally go, yeah, this is a great God story. Maybe. Can we circle back to that sure. question? Sure. Well, like, well, you don't have a great God story on your mind, though? I don't know. See, I was I was going to ask you this, and I was going to tip you off, and it's like, no, cause, because I think... you do. Oh, I have three or four of them. Okay. I have amazing... But here's the thing, is people that I really like tend to be 
they have this this thing about them, mm-hmm. and it's almost always I think attributable to they think God is watching over them. Yeah, I think there's definitely a higher power watching. Yeah, but there's yeah. that. But then the second part is is where there's times you're like, shit, that that's God. There's a big difference between conceptually seeing something versus, oh, I saw it. Like my, my favorite God story, one of my favorite ones is I was getting high at my friend's house. And <laughs> That's where it stops. <laughs> yeah. No, we were getting high and I, we, we would get high before baseball practice and my car was parked this when I got in the car and I was all high and I just started and I swung it around and my car died in the middle of the road and I looked up and there was a fucking, there was a uh, dump truck, trash truck coming right at me and as and the guy looks at me and I can see that he's just like, I'm sorry. Yeah. And it fucking goes. And I'm sitting there. So I'm my car's here. Cars, trash trucks coming this way. It car goes and the guys, I, I mean, I, I remember his face because I remember he, he just was, I'm sorry. Like there's nothing I can do. And I'm looking and it trash goes up, up, out. Boom, straight down the road. And I remember. Oh, it, it wasn't even that. It was so fucking. It was that was just fucking God. I haven't had a story. None like that, huh? No. None. No. God's never. You've never been in a situation where you said where, where you look back and thought, man, that that's interesting then. Never. I've had. So there was this story. I wouldn't say I don't know if it was something from God or anything, but I had this dream. Um, and my mom doesn't really believe in like woo woo stories, right? Like what? But I had this woo 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 like <laughs> what's woo woo? Well, I'll tell you my story. <laughs> um, I had a dream that I was like running in my parents' neighborhood, and um, I heard this voice saying like warning, you know, like your house is on fire type of thing. And I'm running back and I go to my mom and I'm like, mom, did you hear that? And she was like, no, I didn't hear anything. And then it was like, get out of your house immediately. And then my room like burst into flames. And the first thing I thought was like, oh, my dog, because my dog was in there. And that was basically the end of the dream. And I tell my mom about it. And she was like, oh, yeah, it's a weird dream. That was it. And like two days later, I get home and I open the door and there's smoke all in my house. And the first thing I was like, my dog, because she was like barking. And um, I go to the kitchen. My dad had left eggs boiling on the stove for like three hours. <laughs> That's okay. That happens. For three, but it, the house was like filled with smoke and there were papers all over the, you know, something bad could have happened. Right. And this voice, which was the smoke detector, was like warning carbon monoxide levels are high. And I was like, for a week, I was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, mom, remember that dream that I had? And she was like, yeah, that was weird. <laughs> But so, so, by the way, did oh, I just what not, is that? A premonition dream. That's for what that for clarity, did I not just call this? I mean, so I so is said. That, is that along? Well, I mean, let's put it. your requirements? What well, I mean, it doesn't meet <laughs> yours. I'm just saying that when you, two days before, have this distinct dream that my house is going to be filled with smoke, it was danger, there were problems, and two days later, you come home and your house is filled with smoke and you. Wild. Well, is, is, you don't think that that was God helping you? Because well, had I who not else come, would it have been? I don't know. You think it was just random choice? No. I don't have answers to these questions that you're But you do. But, but that's the thing. This is funny. I knew you were going to do this because I, I, I knew it. Well, because, okay. Because you try to be, you're, you're too, you're too accepting of all these other possibilities and it could be this. And sometimes it's just God giving a motherfucker a, a, a clue, a hint. Hey, I'm just telling you this. This is what's going to happen. Well, now, Bishop Tolbert says that those are angels watching over you. Could have been angels. I believe that. I, 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 I like to believe a, that I have a, a guardian angel. Well, right you do, here. but 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 it's it, but that story you just said. I mean, that's a perfect example of wow. I mean, that people always it's it's funny is like people talk about they're aliens and and I always hear scientists say, well, you don't really think so. You know, I don't really think there is. It's like you can't say that scientifically. There are eight trillion worlds out there mm-hmm. and so scientifically you're saying i don't believe there's other intelligent life well that's impossible so there's that fact but when 
something happens that saves your life or potentially your father's life. And two days later, when you, you foresee it or you have uh, an indication of this and two days later, the same thing happens. You can, you can, you can, you can say that's a lot of other things, or you could say it's God watching over you, man. Yeah. I mean, maybe so. And had I not arrived at my house at that time, the place could have been maybe your dad would have been died place. carbon monoxide kills you uh, it's the greatest killer ever. well yeah so that was my story that's true but i did call the god thing so you don't have a better god story <laughs> what do you mean a better one <laughs> well i mean i just I, I just i would think that when i have another one for you i'll call you all right you call you call and back I will, and i will sit here and tell my story and then bounce but but i, I want go but i'm gonna but i want you to talk about it to how it makes you feel and how incredible it is because there are god stories that are just like damn you know, maybe there's one waiting for me. Oh, I bet you there's several waiting for you. God's not, yeah. I mean, he kind of watches. He, I'm utterly convinced that God knows who he needs to reach out to and needs to, to give you a little guidance and a little help. But I'm also utterly convinced that most people miss it. And that's why they don't find joy at some level in their lives. I mean, you're, it's like me sitting in here feeling shitty for myself. I still find, I still find joy in my life. In part because I'm like, man, God has really watched over me. It's just one of these things. Like, well, you got you got that dude. Right. God's on your side, so so you should have one. You should have a great one. Okay. Right. I, I look forward to it. All right. Well, you should. Yeah. And when you do, you say that motherfucking Michael. He told God to come help me. <laughs> Let's talk about your boyfriend. He so I'm gonna me. make fun of so you. So your boyfriend won't allow you to have animals. No, I shouldn't say that. You you twist things I, so I know. quickly. That's this is what you My said. My God. There. I, how? I just was saying how much I love Jeff and that I would really love a cat in my apartment. And your boyfriend says, no, no goddamn animals in this house. That is not how he talks. <laughs> um, I just made him the angriest white guy in America. Did. And he's actually Filipino. Oh, see, oh, he's a, oh, he's a club member then. He's beautiful. I'm a pass. I'm a, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't know he's a club member. You thought I was dating a white dude? No, I, I couldn't imagine you would be, but no. good eh. for you though. Good we like you. flavor. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, he's multicultural. You yeah. would love him. He's yeah. good looking, very handsome. Good. And people are always kind of like, what are you? Same thing you yeah. did to me. Like, what is he? <laughs> is he like Mexican? <laughs> By the way, if you guys have a kid, I call them soppers. So in if you're Jewish and you're born in Israel, you're a sopra. And so I say if two multicultural people have a kid, that kid's a sopra. All right. So there you go. So have a kid. Curly hair. Yeah, all that stuff. Smart, fucking driven. Artistic. Artistic. Watch the kid that I have's not. I'm just like, oh, I don't want to. He's just a jock. He doesn't give a shit about anything artistic. <laughs> I'm like, look, son, look what I made. And he's like, oh, God. He's like, give me a bear, woman. My mom's crazy. Give me a bear. <laughs> <laughs> My mom's crazy. Um, but, how did yeah, you, I mean, how, how do we meet? How did your, no, well, how did you and your parents, how did your parents meet? Oh, this is a good story. They met at LA Fitness. Wow. Before it was called LA Wow. Fitness. Yeah, wow. it was called Nautilus Plus. Which one? On uh, on the traffic circle? No. Like, so my parents are from Orange County. Oh. Well, they live in Orange wow. County. I shouldn't say that's where they're wow. from. Wow. Uh. <laughs> Is that where you're from? That's from. Oh, okay. Texas. Um, well, that's where they live. So, like, my dad's from American Samoa. My mom is from Pennsylvania. Which is like American Samoa. <laughs> Yeah, totally. <laughs> She's from this little town called Williamsport, which is home wow. of the Little League. Wow, yeah, 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 yeah. That's it's a very, very small town. But um, so when she met your dad, did she think that motherfucker looks good? So he, they both, or he was teaching aerobic classes, and he taught this class called um, Step Funk. <laughs> which is essentially like a low impact kind of yeah. dance cardio class. And, and it's usually taught by a brother. They didn't have one. So they hey, get the Samoan guy in and there. And he please. packed the house, <laughs> packed the house, like line out the door. Wow. And so, um, you know, she started taking the classes and then eventually she got to teaching and they still teach to this day. Wow. Wow. I mean, the gyms aren't open, but when they do, like, wow. they still teach. So my, wow. my dad teaches cycling classes, body works, and my mom does step kickboxing, you name it. They're like the OGs. Wow. The, the OGs. When did the, so so how did they end up being together? She just was in the class. I mean, there, there has to be some some more background there. Just I mean, that's all they I taught know. a class. They got married, and that was it. And then they had three kids. Two. Two. Yes. Um, She's like, yeah. That was I feel, it. Yeah, yeah. You know me. You know me. You did your research. <laughs> I did. Um, well, I think 
I, what I imagine is she was probably like in the front row with like a Mickey Mouse crop top, and then like, <laughs> she had spandex on. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And then that's how it happened. Wow. Mm-hmm. And so and I'm the spawn of a gym rat. There you are. But so two gym rats. Two rats plural. <laughs> um, then they you you were raised in Orange County though. Yeah, I was. Wow. Uh, we lived in uh, like it was Orange, but Garden Grove. And I went to school out there. I went to a Catholic school out there. Wow. Orange County is very Caucasian. Yeah. I went to, uh, I took our oldest kid to like a Cirque du Soleil out there. And this was so funny. In Irvine? No, it it was in Orange County. I just remember it. And we were there and it was uncomfortable. (laughs) We were just like, there are a lot of white people here. I mean, it was just which for you guys that aren't in LA, I mean, you, there aren't many places where you go in LA and there's just all white people, but mm-hmm. Cirque de Soleil in uh, Orange County, it's all white people. Oh, so. There he is. Well, it's funny because like a lot of my, so my mom's family lives in Pennsylvania, but my dad's family, so my extended family, they all live, I mean, they're everywhere, but they're in Orange County too. So although I grew up in Orange County, I mean, families were very family oriented. Mm-hmm. I've only ever been around like, my cousins who were half, you know, Samoan, right. Mexican, right. Irish, like you name it. Like, so I've just, I was born in a little melting pot. Um, but yeah, it was so crazy how my parents like came together. But doesn't that melting pot, it's funny you talk about that because uh, we, we, one of our first guests, he was saying to me, he said, so you would hire someone just because they're multicultural. And I said, no, I'd hire them because they're multicultural, which means they're well adjusted and they work hard and they do all kinds of great things. The, the environment that you just said you grew up in, how, how does that impact you today? Um, you have a confidence about you. That's good. Right? Maybe You're like, I do? Because I, I, like I, 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 I was really scared for a minute. I was, I, I'm like, I think I have just cat hair on my face. <laughs> You're that confident that you have Jeff's cat yeah, hair on your face. You're no making shame. out with Jeff. That's no fucked shame. up. No shame. I love That's that. That's pet violence. Um. You, I think you, you molested Jeff. No. That's fucked up, dude. Look Jeff. at Jeff. Where is he at? That's why I ran. No. He said, I'm out of here, dude. I love you, Jeff. Um, <laughs> that's, that's your, oh. your, it's great. Hey, whoa. Now you're, carried, Come now on. you're getting carried away. Come on. Um, your question. So um, I'm utterly convinced that growing up in a multicultural environment, it, 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 it feeds things in you. It makes it gives you freedoms to feel certain ways, and uh, and your your dudes back. And is that your experience? I mean, what what was that like? I mean, you know what I mean? Because you just delineated yeah. the, how you grew up in, and in an area that's almost all Caucasian and very Republican. Not that that's bad. Right. And yet you you have the comp. You you remind me of me and my family. It's just you're a multicultural person. You're like, hey, this is great. Let's go on and go go yeah and, and attack the world and kill cats. I was never taught, you know, racial inequalities. Like, I, I never, I grew up in a very open home. Like, I was very close with both of my parents, and we speak op- openly about our feelings and right. our issues. And I'm very close with my brother. And, you know, that love, it reaches out to my extended family, too. So I think just having that love and support, right. there was no space for, like, hate, you but know, it, but and by the way, you just said that so perfect because it's one of the things again. We're back to this multicultural. The way you've just delineated it, that that's why this matters is because we this process of being in a multicultural environment that's supportive, it 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 grows things in you, it builds things in you, and the way you just explained it so succinctly, I mean that's it, that's it, that's why this matters. We good. Oh, Mark was like, fuck it, I'm leaving. I'm not. I know. He's like, my mu- he like <laughs> he's like, we smoke crack at my house, at my multicultural house. Where's the shrooms? <laughs> um, but that's sweet, though, isn't it? Do you, what, what, now, when, when I told you I wanted you to be on my show, you said, well, I'm not multicultural. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And what, so why did you think that? Because well, um, this is important, by the way. Yeah, I guess so. Well, it's the same issue that you've brought up multiple times where it's like, well, I'm not someone enough to be considered someone. Right. I'm not skinny enough to be someone. People are like, I, I, so I just got a car like a couple weeks ago and I told the guy, I was like, oh, what's, what's the background on your last name? And I told him and he like literally like turned and looked at me like, 
He's like, I'm not going to say anything. And I was like, dude, you can say it. I know exactly what you're thinking. Um, so there's all these stereotypes, sure. right? And sure. um, I guess going back to like not knowing where you where you land, like I, I sure as hell know who I am. I'm still right. figuring things out. But like when you said multicultural, I'm like, well, I don't know if that but that, me? But, but what's so funny is, by the way, you are, but... The, the reason you have this confidence is obviously your parents loved you and they cared about mm-hmm. you. And, and that does one thing. One thing that I want to do in this podcast is so many multi, my parents did a lot of things bad, but one thing they did great was they're just like, Hey, you're in a racial, that's what you are. Don't let anyone tell you anything different. Yes. You're African American. Yes. You're Caucasian, but you are in a racial, mm-hmm. that knowledge has helped me so much in my life. And, but I've met so many multicultural people who are like, well, I'm black or I'm white. No, you're not. And their self-esteem is, as I've said before, <laughs> the, oftentimes the weirdest dude you've ever met is the multicultural dude telling you he's white or telling you he's black. And it's like, well, you're not. And they just don't know. And your parents gave you love and and they built both your cultures around it but that next step of hey but i'm multicultural because that's what i am because that is what you are because a lot of multicultural people they still feel this i don't belong and but what we're doing is saying you do belong you're multicultural yeah and that's what's so important and that's what we have to give to our kids and people like you we, we have to say you do have a home you do have a culture and that is your multicultural. And it's a beautiful thing um, because I've seen it. I've seen kids feel lost. I've seen them look lost. And it's so funny because we were poor, poor, poor. But it was always, man, we're just great. And the reality was we're just great because our parents kind of, we knew who we were. Mm-hmm. And there's so many multicultural kids that don't. And that's sad because it's like, dude, yeah. you're this great thing. You got all this, you have all this culture over here and all this culture and it all comes to you here. Mm-hmm. And it's also the other thing about being multicultural that I love is it doesn't matter if you're Asian and Latino and you're Caucasian. It's that multicultural experience that binds you. If you take five multicultural people and you put them in a room, it's all the same. It's a big dude makes me tear up. It's a beautiful thing. It's that connection based upon the difference in your parentage that just it gives you this thing where you're like man i love you man i i you we're so not burdened by by bitterness and hatred you i mean it's amazing how how many people's live lives are infested with racial animus just animus just by virtue of being who you are or who someone else i have animosity toward you that it's like that thing about forgiveness that it's not for them. It's for you. And forgiveness is great. And it really is coming into this world with animosity toward other people because of race. It, it eats you up. You can see it. They, they, they don't have as much love and compassion to give and you can feel it. And it's like, man, dude, this, that, that anger that's eating you up, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, I think, I mean, going back to my art practice, as of lately, you know, we haven't talked about my my recent work really, but um, I really apparently started, we're going to though. Yeah, I'm like, hey, so I remember you, you did some sculpture when I first got these, and it looked like it was going to be cool. Yeah, um, I really started to delve into my Samoan culture, only because yes, I'm half Samoan, but I don't, I still don't know that much about it. There's not a ton of, there aren't history books about it, you know? Wow, isn't that crazy? Um, and so it's passed down by oral tradition, right. dance, music. You should read Graham Hancock. He does some really cool stuff on Austral, Australia and uh, Tonga in that area. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because when I thought you were part Latina, uh, there is in the, uh, in South America and Amazon, there is a, clear connection from Samoa from that ang- from that area in in the Congo in Brazil it's it's riveting yeah. and it's so it was this when you're coming out I was like man dude those are related but you're from France so it doesn't fucking matter <laughs> well it, it's it's so true though and like and what a the 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 Samoan existence is fucking dude it the the history is so amazing you I know, think so too. Oh, it's a that's and, it's a fact. And I'm not just saying that because I'm. Oh, that's a fact though. I mean, um, it's it's almost certainly th- that area 
almost certainly traveled to Central and North America 20,000 years ago. If you look at the Clovis, which is what people say is when this kind of civilization started in America, it was the Clovis, which just isn't true. Um, but Samoans certainly were here 40, 50,000 years we're ago. We're voyagers. Oh, explorers, amazing yeah. explorers and voyagers. I mean, you've seen Moana. <laughs> oh, but, but by the way, it's funny. I mean, it's it, it's true. It's I, fucking true. My very talented cousin, Tiana Liufau, actually worked on that. She did the choreography for Moana, so props to her. You know what's ironic is the is there are systematic problems in the Samoan community, particularly in America, with gangs and violence, and so much of it. What's crazy is it 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 almost dovetails with the African American problems in the African American areas where people don't understand their history. Mm -hmm. And I look at young Samoan brothers, and it's like you motherfuckers, you discovered the world. You don't have to, you're not limited to, you discovered the world. It's like I tell my kids that that in, in Egypt, 20,000 years ago, they had running literally sewers when in America they had nothing. What, what Samoans have done, it's incredible. And there's not even a question about it, really. There isn't. I mean, it's an amazing. It's I watch I watch I watch that show, and it's and I, all my nephews are of color, and they love it. And it's like, and I'm watching, like, see this it, knowing your future, knowing who you are, knowing what you did matters. You know, uh, oh my God! And if Samoa, I mean, what Samoa has done, it's just incredible. It's incredible, and that's what it's a, this is. Other part of the multiculturalism is, man, dude, that's awesome what you did. That's awesome how you did that. We all did this. And what's crazy is that they were all people of color, dark, light, colorism, Mark, dark, light, skin, all people of color doing amazing things, amazing things. And we continue to do amazing things. Well, we, and we should. And if you think about it, and this is part of the things like this is the other thing, we're going to put your stuff up Buy art, Buy art, Buy Samantha's art. Because that this is the crazy thing is we can do this. We have this own culture. We have money. We have success. We have access. We should support ourselves mm -hmm. because it matters, dude. It's it's. I mean, just think about you, 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 and and Philip's kid, Robert. <laughs> Robert is his name. Robert. What? And you were saying you went. You, that's almost Philip. Oh. I mean, it almost, I mean, it's almost, I mean, it's no. no. All right. When you and Robert have kids, they're going to be these great little multicultural people and they'll be with other multicultural people. And it's that thing, man. That's what's, that's what's so great about that this. Thing, it, that. But it's true. It's fucking true. It's like when, when, when people like us are in a room, it's just, we're, we're just thinking about, man, this world is cool. It's great. We should make that available for our kids, man. And and if we just follow the Jewish model, which is the Jewish people support them. If multicultural people do this, if we do this, we win and the world wins because the way we see race and the way we see society is different. This country, what the, our country was almost fucked in part based upon just ignorance about race or allowing race to be exploited Versus that, that's where people like us say, man, dude, it's, that's, that's not true. That's not true. We don't have to be that. When I watched the, 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 the craziness in Washington, I saw a bunch of people who were hurt and afraid. I saw a bunch of Caucasians who were just scared. They were just scared. They, they, and they're afraid of other people because they, they've allowed race and, and, uh, economics to, to make them feel less, to make them feel less important. They were scared. People like us can say, you don't have to be afraid, man. We don't have to do that. That race doesn't have to work that way. Didn't, isn't that what you saw? I, I didn't. There were some crazy people. I mean, but most of those people, it's like, man, they just, they're just scared. I think we're all a little scared. But isn't that true, though? But that's okay. I mean, that, that, and you, by the way, that's a beautiful thing. You said, it's true. We all are. And you know what? It's, it's okay. It's okay. It's but it isn't something to be exploited. It isn't something to be used to attack Jewish people or or African Americans. It they've used that fear as a divisive tool to make people fight and be angry. Whereas we should say, "Hey, my brother, let's we can all do this." My my one of my favorite lines of my friend John Clam is a famous lawyer, a lawyer friend of mine. 
he told me this about bringing other lawyers on board cases. He said, here's the problem with, with, with splitting up the pie. Um, people get worried about it, but if you make the pie bigger, then it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, that's true. I mean, it really is. Just make the motherfucking bigger. And that's what, you know, they were scared. I mean, they, I, and, and, and that's okay. And, and we just get caught up in this idea of you can't say I'm afraid or you can't say I'm scared. Or you can't say I feel um, less important because a person of color I think is taking my job. You can't say that, but you really can't. And if you say that, then we can say, well, then how can we work on that? We can talk about making that pie bigger. Yeah, that all comes down to like vulnerability, right? And being okay with being vulnerable. Right. I think that's where I like crawl back into my little studio and I, you know, rely on my work for that. Like it takes a lot of vulnerability to be able to put my emotions out there, put my ideas and right. values out there and not have it be criticized, you know? Like yeah. But so. but by the way, you just said you just talked about being vulnerable and you just talked about being scared mm-hmm. and you didn't do it in a studio you did it here with thousands yeah. of people are going to see it. And that's a beautiful thing. And, and, and that's kind of like my God story with you saying, I guarantee you have, and you just don't know it. You talk about not being vulnerable, but what you just did, you're the one that invited that here. You said, that's just being vulnerable and scared. Yeah. And you're a bad motherfucker. <laughs> I'm a bad bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you think though? I mean, you did bring that, yeah. You did put that up. And I'm okay with admitting that because, you know, I've been making art for so long and and part of this journey has been digging into my Samoan culture and figuring out what do these symbols and shapes right. mean that right. I see tattooed on people's bodies. Right. What know? do they mean? I mean they, they mean a lot of things. Yeah. So I mean I my cousin C E, he owns a shop in Westminster. Um, he's you think I'm a badass. He's He's a badass. Yeah. Like, um, does he do traditional? He tattoo? does traditional tattoo. Man, that's, so that's crazy. Yeah, isn't it? and my cousin Tiala just got uh, the for the women. It's called Malu, and it goes from like just below the knees to the upper thigh, and it's supposed to. Yeah, it's very painful, <laughs> but it's like a whole thing where like the family gathers, right. they bring gifts, your family gives a blessing. Um, it's, it's. Do you intense. feel? Do you? Do you feel part of your Samoan culture or do you feel left out of your Samoan culture? Both. Yeah. Yeah. And um, just because I don't, I'm not as knowledgeable, I don't know the language. Um, You know, my dad didn't teach me Samoan. Why not? Which is fine. I mean, he came over here when he was very young. And so I don't think it was because, I mean, maybe, maybe it was because of assimilation. I mean, he came here and he didn't know how to speak English. He wow. learned English in school. Wow. And he said that kids made fun of him. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that funny though, that, that now that, that, that thing that he thought was weak is really such a strength right. thing that you're like, that you want to grab that out. I and want say, so yeah. badly to know. Right. And so that's yeah. why I've made it like a part of my practice is to just, you know, figure it out. But you know, so I want to make it clear. I, I don't represent Samoan artists. Like I, I'm an artist who is Samoan, but when but it comes of course to, you do. But See, when this it is, comes this to, is what multicultural people do. Like, I don't know. Of well, course you do. There are, you are there Samoan. are issues that we can talk about. Um, but you are Samoan. I am Samoan. Right. But I don't want to say that I, I represent my culture in a traditional way because I take things from my culture. I use that as a language to make my work. And I talk about cultural assimilation and, you know, weaving that together with my own interpretation right. of what I know and how I feel connected to it and disconnected to it. Right. I, there's only so much I know. Right. So, um, and that's okay. Right. Sure. Absolutely. I've, I've accepted that. It's part of that. the adventure, right? Yeah, it is. And, um, actually I just talked to my cousin C cause I was like, yo dude, like I've been making these drawings and I had a friend who got one of my drawings tattooed on his arm and I was like, and Robert was like, hey, motherfucker. <laughs> no, Robert was like, dude, you should just start tattooing. And I'm like, actually, I freaking should. So I called my cousin up and he's like, oh, we'll we'll get together and chat. So who knows? Yeah. Next time I'm here talking to you, maybe I'll just be like blasted yeah. with all my shitty or first time a, tattoos. Or, just or doing, maybe I'll just give you a tattoo on the, or, on no, the podcast. Or, or just doing doing amazing <laughs> traditional Samoan yeah. uh, uh, tattoos. Well, that would be... That, crazy that would be cool or what if i started doing like using that same technique but like making my own designs right. so you know right. i'm constantly yeah. thinking yeah. of like how can i make this shit my own yeah 
how can you how can you bind it to who you are? And also keep my culture alive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because tradition is constantly changing. It's it's dynamic. Right. Right. Like. Isn't that funny though that about tradition it really is dynamic and changing and people act like it's not. Yeah. And it's like no no it's 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 a dy- part of tradition working and surviving is evolving. Yeah. And people get all caught up. It's not, no, it, it's, that has changed every step of the way. And, and, and it's part of it, even with respect to, to you, your, uh, Italian heritage, mm-hmm. reaching back and bringing Samoan part of your Samoan heritage to your Italian heritage. What a cool, I mean, you want to talk about two places that cool ass art started and exist mm-hmm. Italy and Samoa. I mean, that's, that's wild. I mean, think about it. I mean, there's, it's incredible. I have yet to travel to Samoa. Oh, really? I, it's, it's on my, my list. I'm just afraid of all the mosquitoes. It's beautiful. <laughs> but you though, know, I went it? to Italy and there were hella mosquitoes over there too. When you were in Italy, did it feel like, uh, did it, did it feel like home? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it did. Yeah. I didn't want to leave. It was beautiful. Wow. The food was amazing. So, and the art is obviously just breathtaking. Um, but yeah, I would love to go to the island. I want to like feel because my cousins and my dad, they have some crazy stories, like crazy ghost stories. And my cousin CE is like, man, you thought Auntie Marianne was crazy. My aunt, cause she had like, I can't even tell you. But I'm just, but I'm just telling you this dude. (laughs) But he was like, you don't know until you actually get there and you experience the the energy and you're in in Samoa. Energy matters. And, 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 culture matters and there are cultures that are so much more open to energy and to the spiritual right. process. It's, right. it's just true, man. It's and, true. And the Samoan culture is definitely one of those. Like even like to tell that the men wear, it's like armor, you know, you're wearing your ancestors with you. when you go to fight when you're going to war? Yeah. Yeah. You know, how amazing is that? Yeah. Um, I just find it so beautiful. And, you know, you have people who aren't Samoan and they have their rock in their oh, um, dude. Polynesian tats. Oh, it's I, I play rugby forever and it's just like, dude, stop it. Just don't. You're I'm not, like, you you're appreciate. Not. <laughs> I'm not going to get mad, you know. I'm not going to get oh, mad. Oh, no, I know, but it's but still it's, just funny. It's so funny yeah, to make I'm fun of like, dudes. It's like, yeah, that you don't get a word I'm like, that. you know what that means? Because <laughs> I don't even know what that means, so I'm not sure if you do either. It's I play rugby with... with Two or three guys who are Samoan who are amazing rugby players. But what's crazier, they're just better motherfuckers, dude. Just better. And it's again, it's a rugby thing, but my Samoan friends were and Fijian, it, there there's a uh, a kindness and a uh spirituality about that connection mm-hmm. that it's just it's amazing. It's Vili is one of my favorite people in the world, and I see pictures of him and his kids, and it's just it's just there, man. You know, yeah. I have another friend photo who is a crazy right wing Republican who gets shitty with me. It's like, why are you being shitty with me? Uh, it's a, it, it's that feeling, man. There's a connection there. There, there's a spirituality that, but again, that's part of this multicultural fucking trip, dude, man, is we get to reach out and say, you get to use that and bring that here. And we get to talk about that and feel that. Cause that shit's cool, man. That when you're receptive to other people's lives and you're receptive in a, in a clear and concise way, not in a defensive way, man, it's so cool. You you can feel it, man. You can feel it. And that's one of the things about being multicultural that you get to say, man, I really respect that. And I, even, I just really respect it. I dig it. You know what I mean? I dig who you are. I dig what you're saying. Yeah. And I'm just a very curious person in general. Like I love getting to know people, getting to know their backgrounds because they know stuff that I don't. And I and I'm like, how can we learn from each other? That's also a function of multiculturalism. I I, I can interracial kids and multicultural kids are all they're just and part of it is because you're you're open. To, I want to know because you've not been told to not want to know. There are kids who are told to not want to know that person's this or that person's right. that. Don't don't talk right. to them. <laughs> and we're like, no, tell me all. Of it. Do tell me. I mean, I want to know. Tell me yeah. all of and it. And then all of a sudden, I have a new best friend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I hear about you, and your shit's cool. So yeah, and I. You know, being an artist and actually going to school was very eye opening to me because identity politics is a thing, people. And, um, you know, I learned so much about many different Man, cultures. How much time do we got? Because I want to ask you about this. This is this is important. Yes. About yeah. the, the, the I was telling you, uh, young artist, the 
I, I don't know if, it, if this is what you call it, identity politics, but it is, I was telling you about my youngest daughter, Calista, and who's an amazing writer, and yeah. her teacher saying, don't help Calista write stories. And I'm like, uh, I didn't help Calista write a story. She wrote that story. And it was one of these things where it's just like, again, how many kids of color have that creativity taken from them because of identity politics? Is that significant in art? I think so, just because, I mean, it's no secret, the art world is dominated by white right. male. Right. Um, so, number one, being a woman of color in the art world, I, I wouldn't say I'm at a disadvantage, but it's definitely, it, it's given me my drive to just push right. and make more work. Right. And I've had my peers say, like, oh, you know, Sam's going to be a successful artist because she's hot. It's like, well, Never mind that. Because like, you're hot? Yeah, I'm like, I'm not going to agree or disagree with that statement, <laughs> but I'm like... But you mean hot physically, not a hot artist. Right. Wow. And I'm just like, well, okay, well, never mind well, you're that like, I'm... like, that's true, however... Well, really, me, so that, so, I'm like, I'm like... See, that's that's funny, though, that so it's because you're attractive. That's why it's almost like that art would seem the one area where you being attractive has, no, has nothing to do well, with it. Well, there are still men who believe that key to success for a woman is to sleep her way there which i'm not for or against you right. know if, I, if it's safe consensual whatever right. do right. you but i'm like that's really right. how dated is right. that statement right. right and so i think it's related to what what was said you know sam's going to be a successful artist because she's hot and i'm like well never mind that i'm in the studio every night wow. until 5 a.m that's crazy making though. you know installing these 15 foot weavings that's funny though. and welding you know so wow. it was that kind of stuff that gave me a glimpse into the art world. I'm like, oh, okay. Like if this guy's saying it, I can't imagine what's yeah. going on. Yeah. So um, that's funny though. I it, mean, you you would just is, think it was how do you correlate those? It's funny because I'm like, that's childish, first of all. But it's also just kind of dumb. It's like, well, but isn't it? Because art is something you look at me like I see art. I'm like, I want that. I mean, it's, and I don't give a who. I don't care who did right. it. I mean, I, I kind of do if it's multicultural parts because I only buy shit from multicultural people, but it's still beautiful, mm -hmm. you know? So so you feel that that, that was part of the perception. How about uh, instructors, artists who just were antagonistic toward you as a person because of your... Yes, experienced that. Wow. Definitely. Wow. I've been pulled yeah. aside um, and asked if I had a problem with a professor personally. Because I didn't necessarily agree with her opinions of someone's work. <laughs> and I'm like, but it's an opinion, right. you know? Um, so you would think, though, that in an art class, that's the thing that was so crazy to me. Because I was like, oh, I'm an artist. I have the freedom to make, I have the freedom to wake up every day and talk about something that is important to me. And make work about, you know, what and I believe. And people will want to hear it and right. see it. But then I love art school because it taught me to think critically about my work, about other people's work. Um, but at the same time, it was like, I, they tried to put you in this box. Oh it was God, like, yeah. okay, well, this person paints portraits, and it's, you're abstract, so you guys are separate. And it's like, well, we can, right. we can right. mingle. Right. It's okay if we want to mix, if I want to paint portraits this time. And so I felt that you know, over time, towards the end of it, I was just like bumping heads with a lot of, not a lot, but a few professors over there. And it wasn't just me. And some people, too, the students would be like, okay, well, we're just going to listen to what she says and agree with it. And I'm like, but why? But, but, like, but again, that's one of these things where, again, I think you benefit from having a loving home environment where your parents taught you to be, have faith and confidence in yourself. But that imposition of professors saying do this, how many artists of color or how many female artists just go okay and then then they don't get to say what they want to say or feel what they a lot of them do oh it's it's stunning especially it's, because they're vulnerable right they're learning um but there's also the institutional prejudice that's imposed upon people artists of color people of color yeah, and there's this need to like want to impress you know your teachers yeah. who are also dealing with their own issues in their own work and so they could be projecting their issues into your work. Oh, you see I, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so it was like I kind of had to dodge yeah. a few times and be and, like, whoa. And, because, she and, and, and your artistic skills were, were obvious. I mean, there was not – was it was it understood other than you being hot, Stephen, Robert, I'm sorry, other than, other than you being hot, 
your artistic ability was evident. Did you then feel that there were biases directed against you because of your success, because of you were a person of color? Or did you feel antagonism from professors or other artists? Mm. They, I guess in a way, because um, I started to branch out into sculpture and, um, you know, they say, oh, make your body of work however you want, yada, yada, yada. And it was like because I was drifting from painting to sculpture, it was a problem. And they're like, oh, well, this is a problem. Like, you're just experimenting. You're, these aren't like thought out ideas. But that is part of like Michelangelo, right? There, there are multiple hugely successful artists that do all medium. They, I mean, they do sculpture, they do painting, they do, right? Yeah. So, I mean, isn't that a problem where, where you're saying, hey, I'm going to reach out and do this? Doesn't that? Doesn't that? I think so. I think it's a problem. Like, it was, it sucked because I, you know, I put hours into this piece, this welded cube that I hung from a fucking tree and I was hand sewing for like 12 hours the night before. Oh, it's just an afterthought. And I'm like, wow. All right. So, th so I you had a prof so professor say this is an afterthought. And yeah, an experiment. Wow. wow. This is just an experiment. And I'm like, is that, is, is part of that gender though too? It was from a woman. Um, but women are, are readily willing to, to, Discriminate against, discriminate against other women. I mean, yeah, that, that's... I was thrown so many, like... I was caught off guard a lot. Wow. Because I felt like a lot of the uh, women had very feminist approach to you know, women's rights. You know, women artists are powerful, but then, like... But they didn't really mean it? <laughs> yeah, and then I would just be told that my stuff was just an experiment. And I'm like, I mean, I didn't let her hurt my feelings because I knew the work that I put into it. I knew the message I wanted to bring. But I was also like... Look at what I did. None of y'all here did what I did. Right. And I was, I'm always about making a statement. You know, like, I'm here to take up space so that people know that I'm here, that I'm present. Um, so that, like, even these paintings, you know, like, when you walk into the room, like, you're, they catch your eye almost immediately. Right. And, like, it's a part of me. It's a part of who I've always been. Like, I come from bloodlines of, like, entertainers, singers. So it's like, right. it's nothing. One of my That's favorite my lines is that uh, conservatives worry me, but white liberals scare the living shit out of me. Because it's this, this, oh, well, you'll be, no, I, I don't need you to tell me what I'm going to do. Right. It, it's it, when you're talking about art, art people saying that to you, it's like, that's my thing, man. It's, it, it's that, it's that, and again, I don't think it's intended, and if it is, who gives a shit, but it's, it's weird how. If you're going to be a person of color and be successful, you really kind of have to, you got to have your own vision because lots of other people are trying to tell you no. Um, and, and the good thing is, ironically, is we end up, again, it, there. It, it's this product of multiculturalism, I think, which is like my dad was like, just don't ever quit. Yeah. Don't ever quit. Just no, keep working, working, working. And that gets us gets you a lot of ways but it sure is funny where you're just it's it's just weird how you're like well, right i thought you were for me but you don't sound like you're really for yeah, me sounds like you think i'm an idiot i know and thankfully i had like my core group of homies who have helped me you know install some stuff like i mentioned right. earlier stay in can you studio. say homies again and let's put this under homies. the widest sounding homies ever why because <laughs> he said homies because they are homies. There's a difference between friends and homies. Oh, yeah. There is. All right. Okay. What, what do you think the difference is? A friend? I just would never say homies. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I'm, just I'm still young. <laughs> I don't have a TikTok, but... <laughs> Calista does. That's good. I think we're almost done. Okay. By the way, how can people see your art, buy your art? They can find my website, which you will put in the link. Put the link below. Yeah, SamanthaTungaloa.com. And then follow me on Instagram. I'm pretty active. I'm Afro Spam. Yes, yes. <laughs> A-F-R-O-S-P-A-M. And the history behind that, I used to have an Afro and I like Spam. You know? <laughs> it's, there you go. Very simple. By the way, buyer, I, I, I invite you guys to go look at Samantha's art. Check it out. Because it, it's cool as shit. Or, you know, talk to me. Like, if you don't, if you can't buy, like, we could talk about it. I could... 
commissions and stuff. Like, we'll but but she out. she won't give you a break. I was trying to negotiate. She's like, no, no, you no. You got a deal. I, sir. I paid a lot of money for both of those. Please, but, but you didn't the, pay ten thousand. Uh, I did not do that. But I I love both of <laughs> the them. The audacity. I love both of them. Yeah, and I'm keeping. You need a third one, actually. I, I, I know I do. I have someone wanted to buy one of these, and they offered me. What do they? What do they offer? Five thousand bucks for this one. You could have given me the rest. No. <laughs> Fuck, dude, that's my art. No, you know what? You're like, yeah, that, that shit wasn't worth anything. No, I love that. Hang on I, to that forever. Oh, dude, that's going to be, you're going to be famous, more famous than you are. And I'm going to say, oh, I've been digging her for decades. So I appreciate the support always. You know, and I do. thank you, know, you for having me on the show. You thank on. you, Mark. Good meeting you. And thank well, you, Jeff. Jeff, you are. And Jeff, see, now Jeff no. was there. Uh, this has been a Mark Samuel Media production. In uh, accordance with, or in conjunction with, the Laugh Bureau. I have to say that. All right. Both multicultural club member entities. Samantha, multicultural cultural club member. I'm slurring shit. Multicultural fucking hot chick artist. Oh, my smack. I do love you, though. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Cool